Every one of us up here is guilty of what I'm about to say. We have taken some sort of immunotherapy and based on something we found on Google, we combined it with something else and threw it at patients. So combination immunotherapy um, is all the rage. And all of us have a portfolio of those trials that are open right now. Sorry? No, well, I you're was gonna just going to say. Right at me. Well, no, because the data demonstrates that there's no response if you're MSI stable Fair for enough. single agents. But so, so that's why we're I doing compost. I totally get it. But so the question is, so I get the excitement. The question is, is all the low-lying fruit been plucked? Or are, is there going to be some magic combination of therapy? You're the furthest along because you've got a randomized study. Um, you know, maybe give us an update on what we're going to hear at this meeting and sort of your own gut feeling about these MSS patients in colorectal. So this is the issue is that microsatellite high tumors have lymphocytes in them. So when you look in the microscope, there they are. So all you have to do is turn them on. For patients with microsatellite stable disease, it's what we call the immune desert or immunologically cold tumors where there's not really any lymphocytes in there or they're surrounding the periphery of the tumor, but there's nothing to turn on. Mm -hmm. So the data that you're referring to is the combination data of cobimetinib, which is a MEK inhibitor, plus atezolizumab, a pdl one inhibitor. And what we see preclinically is when you give a MEK inhibitor, it increases intratumoral CD8 positive T cells, and it increases the expression of class one MHC, which means that you know the tumors are showing more of their antigens for the T cells to react to. You throw a little gasoline in the form of a tezolizumab on the fire, and then can you create immune response? So the data that we showed earlier was that we saw about a 17, 20% response rate in a small group of KRAS mutated patients with colon cancer who were treated. The data that we're going to be showing tomorrow is of a much larger set uh, from this trial, which is 84 patients. And this includes patients who are KRAS wild type as well as KRAS mutated. The response rate's now sitting about 8%. But interestingly enough, doesn't matter if you're wild type or mutant, still the same potential benefit. And all of these were confirmed MSS, right? So the this seven group. patients that had PRs, mm. five of them were confirmed MSS or MS low, which mm. is thought to be, behave like mm -hmm. MSS. And two of them we did not have the status okay. for microsatellite. When we pull out the group of patients that were MSS and confirmed MSS, response rate still sits around mm -hmm. 8%, median overall survival about 13 months. Yeah. So small population of patients that are potentially helped by this, but I think what it showed us was our first blink yeah. that it is potentially possible to convert a cold tumor into a hot tumor. Now what we have to do is build on that. We don't absolutely know that those few patients wouldn't have responded, or maybe we say because we've tried it in other MSSs, we, we didn't find them before. Exactly. So your exactly. argument is that the combination may have made these few patients respond. Exactly. And yeah. these were heavily pretreated patients. Yeah. Right, so, about, so most of the patients had at least five or more prior therapies. Yeah. Mike, you've spent your career, I know, because I've worked with you in some of it, in, in trying to make, I don't know, tumors hot now that we're thinking about it mm -hmm. with, with immunostimulation. So checkpoints or brake cutters, right. you know, this is to turn it on. Do you see uh, a window here where checkpoints will make the therapies you've been working on for the last... 20 years more Well, I effective. sure hope so, John. <laughs> that's, that's, you're right. Now that you've told me all these years that I've been <laughs> slaving away it's trying to make 20. this work. It's yes. Been 20, yeah. Yes. Um, so I, I think you're talking about the concept of either cancer vaccines mm -hmm. or other immunostimulatory approaches. There are other approaches for getting the T cells to the tumors, these uh, bispecific T cell engagers. Uh, the, the point is, it's very clear if you don't have T cells in the tumor, there is nothing for Checkpoint to work on. In our preclinical work, which we've published on, vaccines can increase the T cell infiltrate and the type of T cells. It's just not getting any old T cell in the tumor. You pointed out the CD8 positive T cells are the ones. There are other T cells you don't want, like regulatory T cells mm -hmm. in the tumor. So um, there are uh, studies that are moving along trying to inflame the tumors in that manner. Yeah, CAR Ts, bispecific monoclonal antibodies, um, the Rosenberg stuff of growing tills mm -hmm. and force feeding them cancer. Yeah. You know, in, you know, personalized thing. Anybody got a, a a recommendation for an investment to our listeners? What what <laughs> oh, what's no. going to work here? No, no, I'm trying to keep my conflict of interest <laughs> down. <laughs> I didn't say what you've invested. In. I was give tips to to, our, to keep them watching. Yeah. I think there's just a lot of new interesting drugs and we really just need to keep a lookout and, and as long as the patient feels well yeah. and the labs are good, continue to put them on clinical trials 
and tr continue to try to encourage pharmaceutical companies to open more trials in the U.S., not just overseas as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, we see a lot of great trials that are largely being done overseas, but yet we have so many patients here that also need assistance. Yeah, we, we love these kind of trials because we're ever hopeful and ever positive, but I still have to say, first of my, my basic comment is that it feels like we're just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Is this I think that's true. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean the, the data you described, I mean, it's really encouraging, and if we can continue to do these things to sort of make the current checkpoint inhibitors better, great, but I think it's going to take another big break and another way to, to modulate the immune system to really make an, an impact.